The opinions expressed in the following program are not necessarily those of Eastlink Community TV, its sponsors, or partners. Technology's Cooking Experience. Hello everybody and welcome to today's episode of Mama G's Cooking Experience. Brought to you kindly by Eastlink Community TV and supported by Seasons Pharmacy and Culinaria here at 815 Lorne. On today's episode we're going to do some savory sides. Things that you can serve to your friends and family when they're coming over to your place that are just one notch a little bit above mashed potatoes. So I want to talk to you a little bit on what we're going to serve. So what we're going to serve first one is a roasted squash plate. So three of the squashes that I love to use that are local are the Hubbard squash, the acorn slash pepper squash, and the mighty crooked squash. They call it the crooked neck squash, which I believe is just a uh, family member of the butternut squash. But you get all of this uh, beautiful thick uh, squash, which you can use a lot of. So, the Hubbard squash, let's talk about this beauty first. This beauty is really hard to cut into, so one of the major suggestions that I have is to da, 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 roast it first. Stick the whole thing into your oven, get it roasted off for about two hours at 350 degrees, and you'll get it nice so that you're gonna be able to manipulate it. But mama G, there's seeds inside. That's okay. The seeds add to the flavor and they add to the sweetness of the flesh of the, of the squash. So, what I'm gonna do is, since I've already roasted this one off, I'm just gonna put it to the side. And I wanna manipulate this crooked neck squash. Now you can use all of it at once, or you can just cut a chunk off that you need, making sure to put a paper towel. Here, let's just give you an example. I'm just gonna use this part of the neck. Nice and easy. Now. Around here, what's gonna happen is it's gonna start to bubble where the liquid's gonna come out just like a cucumber. So all I'm gonna do is just take a piece of paper towel and put it on the end and just let it stick, okay? Let it stick and then once it's stuck, you can saran wrap it and you'll be fine. But it needs to be covered. So I'm just gonna cut the top off here. Nice and beautiful and orange. One of the reasons why we serve squash is it's so good for you. Not, you know, and it's very different than potatoes, but it, you can make it the same kind of texture as a mashed potato, which will be fine. So you can just peel off the skin. You can use a knife or this squash is so nice that you can use a, um, it's so soft, I should say, not nice, that you can use a vegetable peeler. But as a chef, you know, I just get really used to having the knife in my hand. Doo -doo -doo -doo. And all I'm gonna do with this, guys, is just peel it, and then I'm gonna cut it into some nice, nice sized chunks. And I'm just gonna roast it off. The fibers that you're getting from squash is not to say necessarily the same as a potato, but it has more nutrients than a potato. And it's grown locally here, and anybody can grow it, it can grow anywhere. So Knowing that, the other thing too is that it lasts forever. Like you can grow one, store it properly in your, in your cupboard or under, you know, in your basement if it's nice and cool in your garage. 
and it'll last a really long time. Under the right conditions, squash in your fridge and stuff, and you're in a cold storage, it'll last a long time. So guys, all I'm doing is I'm just chopping up the squash. I'm going to, sorry, I'm gonna throw it into a Pyrex pan with just nothing. I'm going to get it so that it's soft but not mushy. Probably 25 minutes at 350 degrees and then we're going to finish it off in the pan. So knowing this, I'm just going to make some nice large sticks, throw them in. Try not to dice them. If you dice them at this point, they'll become mushy. So nice, big, thick sticks, you know, nice and thick. Throw that in your oven, 350, and when it comes out, we're gonna season it. Now that I have everything roasted and steamed from the oven, you can see that my knife can go through the squashes quite easily, okay? And you know what, I threw in some carrots just for fun. So what I do now, so it's about five minutes before dinner, all of my stuff is cut and ready to go. I bring out my cast iron pan. I put in about two tablespoons of butter. You know what, I'm gonna turn my heat down. There we go. So I'll put it to medium. And I'm, because what I see, I'm gonna put a little bit more uh, butter in there. So I'm gonna take my squash, my um, crooked neck squash, and I'm just gonna lightly drop it in, okay? So all you're gonna do, friends, is you're just gonna drop it in, and don't move it. Don't stir it, don't do anything, because you're trying to get that really awesome, golden, crispy kind of side, do you know? So I'm gonna put in some carrots now. My Hubbard squash, look, I was able to, look at how beautiful that is, you know? I was able to just cut it and it's awesome. Nice chunks here. Soft, but still keeps itself together, you know? And that's kind of what you want. Okay, now that my butter's gone, I'm gonna put my heat up a bit more. Like I said, medium high. This is an induction oven, so it just takes, induction stove top, it just takes a little bit more. Take my, um, my acorn squash off of the peel. Put that on. Now while that is doing its nice little browning, salt and pepper. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. And oh, maple syrup. Everything Canadian in a jar. Maples, love, sweet, sugar, local high in iron and antioxidants. I'm telling you, perfect. So all you're gonna do is you're just gonna let it fry up, get crispy, and you're gonna serve it off. I like to finish it off with a little bit of parsley. Mology's cooking experience. Kitchen and recipe ingredients provided by Seasons Pharmacy and Culinaria, 815 Lawrence Street, Sudbury. And we're back. So this time what we're gonna try and complete is to do a dehydrated oyster mushroom and sausage risotto. Now, I used to hate risotto. Honestly, people would ask me to make it and I'd be like, it's so dumb, like why would you wanna eat it? And then I learned how to perfect it and now I kind of make it all the time. So don't be uh, afraid to try new things uh, as I ate a slice of humble pie with this one. So what I got now is my cast iron pan. I have it heating up. I'm gonna dice up this onion to start off. 
and uh, to get things started. But let me talk to you about my heartwood mushrooms, uh, heartwood mushrooms, dried oyster mushrooms. Mama G, why are you using a dry mushroom? Well, listen, one, it's readily available and, and you can have any kind of mushroom you want at this point. Just do what you want. So we buy them, we get, have them here at Seasons. They're a nice dehydrated pack. You get lots of mushrooms in there. You know, it takes up less space when it's dry. Then what we did, what I did is, is I took out about a good solid cup of mushrooms out, put them in a bowl, and I rehydrated them, ready, with some elderberry liqueur, which I got at Crosscut. Now, I like to put a little bit of liqueur into my rehydration, that way I don't have to use it when I'm cooking. It burns off nicer, it, de it uh, evaporates the alcohol, and it's a lot easier to deal with than trying to rehydrate a mushroom while you're trying to cook. Like, it just doesn't, yeah, you can do it, but the resistance when you eat it, if you don't get the stems right, it becomes chewy. It's not that good. It's not that good. And at the end of the day, you want to impress your friends and family and yourself. At the end of the day, Forget trying to impress everybody else. Impress yourself. If you can impress yourself, then you know you've done a good job. That's how I know if I did a good job. So I got about, uh, I don't know, here, quarter cup. Get that in there. Some nice butter. I'm using Farquhar's butter because, you know, their milk comes from Werner. Try to keep things as, as local as possible. Gonna give a nice little dice. Now listen, you can do whatever you want to put into your risotto, but just remember this. Will it fit on a fork? Yep, I know, so simple, but that's how I train my people who are making risotto all the time. Like the goal is, will it fit on a fork? And the same thing and rule applies to when it comes to making soup. Will it fit on a spoon, you know? Will this be too much of one bite within everything else? So a nice small dice into the onions. Right? Then we're gonna add our mushrooms, our rehydrated mushrooms with the onions. Oh my God, guys, it smells so good. Smells so good. Mix that around. Oh, I do look forward to the day where technology brings me to smell o vision, guys. No lie. Oh my God, I just want to eat that. Okay, so I'm going to take my sausage. So I decided to go with a dried Portuguese chorizo. Oh, wait. Yep, dried Portuguese chorizo sausage. I'm going to turn my heat down. I don't want it to brown too much. And give it some nice quarter moon slices. Throw that in there. So delicious. Now you can do this with chicken. You don't need to put in meat, but I like to put in meat because I like a little bit of resistance and the spiciness of the chorizo goes really nice with the mushrooms. Mmm. I'm pretty excited for the holidays to come. You know, the gathering of friends and family, the sharing of different multicultural foods at potlucks. You know, it's a good time to sit and reflect and be grateful for the things that we do have in our life. The holidays are a very great time. Now, they're also not such a great time. So for those who are, you know, at home, be a good neighbor. Invite them over, you know? It's the time where we put all of our stuff aside and we get back together with our family and friends. Now, I have here some grated topo Portuguese cheese. Now, when you smell it, it's beautiful and, and, and aged and almost whiny like an Emmental. We'll keep that on the side. The other thing that I have brought is I made a homemade um, turkey broth 
that I have here that we're gonna use for our risotto. So with this much um, in my pan here, uh, and I'm only gonna be serving about four people. I'm gonna use one cup of dry arborio rice. Now I like to use arborio rice for risotto as it's creamier. One cup, perfect. It's creamier and it has a nice resistance uh, to the to the bite. Okay, so you're just gonna give it a little, make sure you rinse and wash your rice. It's very important. Because there's a lot of starch on rice. Make sure to use nice cold water because if you use hot water, you're gonna get a lot of, uh, you'll get stickage. Okay, perfect. Throw in the rice. Now all you're gonna do, my friends, is you're gonna put this on medium high and you're gonna stir. And you're gonna stir and you're gonna stir and you're gonna stir. And every time your liquid seems to be running out, you're gonna add a little bit more liquid. And you're gonna keep doing that until the liquid is all absorbed by the rice. Nice, simple, should take you 10 minutes, you know, but honestly, your friends and family will enjoy this. See, nice and beautiful. Just keep it up, stir it in. And at the end, all you're gonna do is throw in some rice. So when we come back, we'll have a beautiful spelt berry stuffed tomato. Cooking experience. Kitchen and recipe ingredients provided by Seasons Pharmacy and Culinaria, 815 Lawrence Street, Sudbury. Welcome back. And in this segment, I'm going to teach you how to make a stuffed uh, tomato that you can serve to your guests. Now, what am I stuffing my tomato with today? Today, I'm stuffing my tomato with the local Northern Ontario spelt berry. Mama G, what's a spelt berry? What do I do with it? Where do I get it? Well, you get it here at Seasons. And what do you do with it? You soak it overnight, okay? You take whatever amount you want, and it's going to double itself in size. I don't know if I would say double. I At least 1.5 times its size, and you just soak it overnight, okay? Just like you would when you're doing beans. So what I have here is I have the heat started, and I'm just gonna start uh, sauteing up some onions. Of course, we use butter. Now you can use olive oil, you can use pork lard, you can use beef tallow, but I like butter, and I like salted butter, as it gives a nice creamy texture, creamy finish to my, my dish. And it smells really nice. And I don't have to add so much salt to my finished product. It's a win-win all around. So in here I have about two tablespoons, one and a half tablespoons of butter in my cast iron pan. Got that nice and melted down. I'm going to add one chopped onion. Now what's the rule to chopping onion? Will it fit on a fork, right? So we got that happening here. Mama G, how do you uh, how do you stuff a tomato, and why would you stuff a tomato? Listen, we all stuff cabbage, we stuff peppers, we stuff zucchinis, we stuff pumpkin flowers. Today we're stuffing a tomato. So the best way to stuff a tomato is one, wash it. Two, take your paring knife and make a circle or a square, whatever you want. 
pull it up and you have yourself a little core. I take my core and I cut it down and I put it in my bowl here. Then I take my spoon and I just, just go outside the edges where the seeds are. Don't go crazy, don't go hard, because you don't want to rip the sides of the tomato. You want to get the seeds and the, the fiber out of here. I know this has a technical term, but I'm not sure what the technical term is. Listen, at the end of the day, I'm here to teach you how to cook and just do something different and have a sustainable Northern Ontario life, you know? Try to keep everything within the 100 mile diet, guys. And I know spices, they don't happen. And I get that, I understand, me too, me too. You know, I'm not saying that I'm perfect. I'm close to it though. So here we go, all I'm doing is taking my fork, I'm mashing up my tomato, I've got my onion, um, sauteing in there, okay. Now I've, I've uh, drained out my spelt berries. They smell nice. They smell kind of uh, sweet. I don't know, it's hard to describe. It's a nice smell. Now when they soak, they have like a really nice soft, like you could eat them just soaked, you know? I'm sure you could do that. They're high in fiber. You can substitute your rice, you can substitute your barley, whatever you want to do with it. When using a cast iron, uh, just try to have an oven mitt around because the heat transfers all the way to the end. I'm just giving it a nice little quick, quick fry here with my onions. I'm gonna add a little bit of my tomato concassé here, which is just a nice French word for saying uh, mushed tomatoes. Just to put a little bit back in there. There we go. Some fresh cracked black pepper. And I'm gonna put just a scoop like look, like maybe, I don't know, just a pinch, just a little bit, just a smidge, not too much, okay? Now you can put nuts in here, you can put beans in here, you can put cheese in here. Honestly, you can do anything you want at this point. All I'm doing is taking my tomato cavity. Once this stuff is all nice and warm and hot, you just stuff it inside your tomato. Don't pre-cook your tomato, okay? It's nice and raw. Cold, look at that. Oh my God, that looks so nice, yeah. Okay, look at that, beautiful. Took what, five minutes? Nice, easy, and your friends will be like, wow, oh, that's so fancy. You took so much time, and you'd be like, yeah, yeah. I learned it from this great chef. Just kidding. But honestly, look, nice and easy. Turn your heat source off. You're gonna put this in the oven. You're gonna put it in at 350 degrees with the lids on top. So with our beautiful finished products here, I've added a little bit of the Capus casing cheese to the top of my tomatoes before I bake them and then I finished them off with some fresh cut parsley. I took our risotto out of the pan and let it sit a little bit. And again, I added some fresh cut parsley. Then over here in our beautiful dish, our caramelized squash with the maple syrup glaze. Just let it go a little bit so it becomes foamy in the pan and then pour it on top. The butter and the maple syrup go hand in hand together. You know, these are the kinds of dishes that you want to bring to a potluck or you want to bring to a party or even just serve your family. It's nice to have something different than just regular white rice or mashed potatoes. Bring something that's more nutritious, that's local, and that you can get here at Seasons. I would like to take the opportunity now to thank Eastlink Community TV for this awesome show of cooking with Mama G. 
And I really want to thank our supporters of Seasons Pharmacy and Culinaria, all of our foragers, farmers, and local people that are just really putting in all the effort so that we can have what we need here in Northern Ontario. Thanks again, and I look forward to having you join me for another episode. <laughs>